Wow. Um, don't. I'm at a loss for words, to be honest, people. Um, shocked. I just, just, just stunned. Uh, yeah. Didn't think I'd have to do this so soon. <laughs> Hello everyone, Tyler Rowlinson. Welcome to a very unexpected video and one that has, like I say, shocked me. I, I'm, I'm completely stunned. I'm, I'm, I really am. I really am at a loss for words because I, I did not see this coming at all. But it has happened. Johnny Jackson has been sacked he's gone he is no longer Charlton manager he has departed the club he becomes the third manager to be sacked under Thomas Sangard's tenure Bowyer of course being the first in 2021 Adkins being the second late last year and then Jackson today yeah there's there's there's, there's very mixed very mixed feelings um about this there is a, a a big part of me that wants to say that the right decision has been made, but there are there are so many things going through my head right now that I'm probably going to contradict myself multiple times within this video. So I think through the shock and the lack of words, I bet, think we best just go straight into this video. So allow me to, as ever with these videos, really read the club statement. Uh, it was put out probably about 40 minutes ago like I was very <laughs> very blissfully unaware um of what was going on I was busy doing other things allow me to read Charlton Athletic can confirm the departure of Johnny Jackson as the club's manager Jackson was announced as caretaker manager in October 2021 before being appointed as the club's permanent manager in December 2021. Charlton owner and CEO Thomas Sangard said, I would like to thank Johnny for everything he has done for the club. He is a Charlton legend and has given his all for the club as a player, captain, coach, assistant manager and manager. I am grateful for all he has contributed during my time at Charlton, including stabilising us this season when he took over as manager following our poor start to the campaign. The decision has been a very difficult one to make. Johnny has done so much for this club, but I felt the time was right to make the change as we continue our preparations for next season. Our search for a new manager has begun. The season wasn't the season any of us as the club at the club wanted. I have big ambitions for Charlton and it will be important for us to find the right candidates that can build on the foundation in place and help us progress on our journey. Jackson arrived at the club as a player on loan in February 2010 before permanently joining that summer. He played 279 games for Charlton scoring 55 league goals and has been involved in two promotions to the championship as captain in 2011-12 and as assistant manager in 2019-20. The club would like to extend its sincere thanks to Johnny for everything he has done for Charlton Athletic over the 12 years at the Valley and wish him all the very best in his future career. So, there it is. My thoughts, my thoughts about Johnny Jackson being sacked by Charlton. Now, as I said, I think I'm going to contradict myself quite a lot in this video because there is a lot of things I'm going through my head right now, you know, and like I said, it's just the pure shock of it, really. It really is just the the pure shock of this news coming out because I did not expect it. I really did not expect it. I was very much under the illusion that Jackson was going to be here next season. You know, Sangard has spoken um, openly in the past saying that, you know, I have confidence in Jackson and it seemed very likely that he was going to uh, stay put um, for next season and he was going to be given a shot. Now, he inherited a very poor squad, let's be honest. Nigel Adkins was completely out of his depth. Rightly so, got the sack, should have been sacked long before he actually did. Jackson inherited Adkins' team, you could argue. We were, what, second or third bottom at the time. So the fact that he managed to get us into 13th, although still not a good finish and something that we should not be celebrating over, I've said it 
in the previous video, it is an embarrassing finish for this club and I'm utterly disgusted by the team and everything associated with the club for this season. The fact that he did manage to get us in that position and avoid relegation, I think, is a miracle. Now, the ultimate question is, was it the right decision? And like I said at the start, I think if I'm putting like all um, sentimental feelings to one side, a, a, a massive part of me does think it's the right call. And I, you guys can have your opinions in the comments. But I do think it was, like I say, I think a majority of me thinks it is the right decision. You know, when he took over, you know, there was a massive honeymoon period. We looked brilliant. You know, we looked fantastic when he first took over, you know, instilled some confidence in these group of players that looked like they just didn't care. And then he gets the job full time and the drop that we went on from there was catastrophic. You know, it wasn't just like a little blip. It was catastrophic. And unfortunately, he looked like a manager that was inept and out of his depth. You know, you can tell he was inexperienced, you know, constantly playing the same system, five at the back. You know, people have said that, oh, he's done the best he can with the tools that he had. You know, he's the manager. You know, he picks the team. He picks the system. He could have full well, he full well could have chosen another system to rock with. But no, he was very persistent with the five at the back. He stuck with that, didn't change it. There was no plan B. He didn't look like he could motivate a squad. And ultimately, like I said, he just looked like a manager that was inept and out of his depth. And that is... I think the brutal truth, to be honest, I think that is the brutal truth. You know, like I said, there was a great honeymoon period, but the dip that we had was absolutely disgraceful. And he has a massive part to play in that. You know, he, like I said, he picks the team. He's stuck with that five at the back. Would he have done things different next season? That is another question. And that is what is playing with my head a little bit. A part of me did want to give Jackson a shot for this season. You know, I would have liked to have seen him build his own team because you can make the very strong case of he inherited Nigel Adkins' team. You know, he did not have a say apart from the January transfer window. And even then, you know, we did very little compared to what we did in the summer in January. I would have liked to have seen him, you know, build his own team because let's face it, we've got a very big rebuild um, on our hands this season again and even bigger now with the news of Jackson now going. But I would have liked to have seen what he'd have done. You know, would he have done things differently? Would he have changed the five at the back? Would like who would he who would he have brought in? You know, how would he have set up? You know, would we be in a better position? And and that does play with my head. You know, because I it, it does sting. It, it it does. This one does sting because you know th th this is a club legend. You know, this is a club legend we're talking about. You know. He dedicated 12 years of his life for this club. You know, he gave his heart and soul as a player. He was He's one of my all-time favourite players to play for this football club. You know, he just gave 200% every time he wore our shirt. And then, obviously, he stuck with the club. You know, he was assistant manager. He got promoted with us in the, to the championship with Bowyer in charge. You know, he got promoted as a player as well in 2011-12. He's been through the lows as well. You know, he's been through two relegations as well. You know, relegation from the championship under Roland in 2016. And then relegation in 2020 you know he's been through highs and lows at this football club and then obviously to be given the shot when Bowyer left initially and got the victory against Bristol Rovers and then stayed on as assistant under Nigel Adkins and then obviously getting the job uh, on a caretaker basis and delivering the results that he did back then was absolutely fantastic but as I said after that the dip just completely fell apart like I think the sentimental views are getting to me a little bit, you know, because this is Johnny Jackson we're talking about ultimately. This is Johnny Jackson, but I think the massive part of me, like I said, the massive part of me does think it is the right call because, like I said, I think he just proved himself to be quite in it. Another argument that I have to raise about this is Sangard, you know. I, I do think the contract that Jackson signed set him up to fail from the very beginning because I think the contract was very ludicrous. You know, the contract is triggered by high finishes. Like, And Sangod came out recently as well and said that, oh, the summer transfer window, we made mistakes. Remember, he had the final say when it comes to transfers in the summer and he's giving Jackson these high targets, you know, oh, finish in a higher position. Like, with the players that we had, you know, we've got to be... You know, I mean, Jackson managed to keep this squad up. You know, like I said, if Adkins would have stayed any longer, I think 
we really would have been in the shit and we would be seriously in danger of relegation. You know, the team was that bad. I just think that the contract that he signed as well was ludicrous. It set him up to fail, you know. Did Sangard really believe that Jackson could have redeemed anything from this season? Because I don't think he could have. There was no way that he was going to be able to do anything of that nature. No way. And then, you know, he's saying like, oh, Jackson didn't fit the bill. You know, Richard Cawley said Jackson didn't fit the style of play that he wants to play. And then Louis Mendes really hit the nail on the head. What qualifies Thomas or even his son, Martin, to say what our style of play is? Because they're not qualified to say, you know, what style of play we have. And that is, you know, the big question. And, and Sangard is getting... A lot of pelters for that. But there, is, like I said, there is a lot of, you know, mixed opinions. And I, I myself am very mixed about this. Like I said, I think the contract that he signed set him up to fail from the get-go. Like I said, I would have liked to have seen what he could have done this summer. You know, give him a pre-season, build his team, see what he can do. And then we go from there. But then again, from what I did see... When he was manager, I wasn't inspired. And that's the truth. That is the brutal truth. I was not convinced at all by what I was seeing. I wasn't confident. But I think ultimately now, the big question surrounding this club right now is two very simple words. Who's next? Who is next? You know, this is, this will be the fourth different manager under Thomas Sangard's tenure. And Remember, Sango took over the club in 2020. So in not even two years yet, we're about to have our fourth different manager, which is a concern. You know, that that is a concern with managerial changes. But I think with this season, you know, the team that we had, it was absolutely shocking. This squad got two managers sacked this season, Adkins and Jackson. And there is now a massive, massive rebuild than ever before, really, at this club than what we previously thought. You know, we thought that Jackson was going to be here. He was going to rebuild. You know, we had a big task at hand, but now we're searching for a new manager as well. Sangar said in the statement that the search has begun. We need to get this appointment done very quickly. And it needs to be the right man. This really will make or break Sangard as Charlton owner. It, it will. If he's making this big of a decision on Jackson, when you can very strongly argue that he wasn't given a fair shot, if we make this appointment and it doesn't work out, dare I say it, but Sangard out, honestly, at that point. If this backfires, Sangard, re we really need to point the finger at Sangard and really, really do need to start questioning him. But like I said, who's next? Who is next? What do we do? Who is the next appointment? Immediately off the top of my head, there are a number of managers that I think will be on the radar. Obviously, there will be the standard Alan Kirbishley and Chris Powell rumour. I think that will be fairly, uh, yeah, that'll be fairly evident. But that's obviously not going to happen. Jason Yule, I think you could maybe throw onto the list. I'm not, I'm not saying I want him because obviously he was the backroom staff of Jackson. The statement didn't actually give away that Yule. Uh, was leaving with Jackson. It just said Jackson's gone. I don't know if you always stay in put, but I think I think it's probably very likely that you all will be on the list of candidates, but I don't want him personally because he's the same backroom staff as uh, Jackson. So I think we do need a fresh idea. Now, immediately off the top of my head, there are three candidates that have recently departed from their respective clubs that I think should be seriously considered. And that is Mark Warburton, Tony Mowbray and Michael Appleton. Now, Mark Walburton, I'd probably throw at the top of that list. You know, he's obviously leaving QPR. What he's done at QPR over the last couple of years is very good. It is very, very good what he's done there. And I think he would be an exciting appointment. Obviously, getting him down to League One is a problem. And the same goes for Tony Mowbray. I think it's going to be very interesting to see if those two are on our radar and if we do end up going for those two. But I think... Probably at the top of that list, Walburton and Mowbray will be 
very good appointments, you know, to get them down from the championship because they've both done very well at QPR and Blackburn, respectively, especially this season. Michael Appleton, I think, will probably be on that list as well. Obviously, recently departed Lincoln City. They had a pretty bad year this year. But, obviously, he did get them into the playoff final the season before. He seems to be very highly rated by Lincoln and is League One experienced. But I guess only time will tell, really. But I think, like I said, we have to get this appointment right because we need to start this rebuild sooner rather than later. You know, we need to get we need to get going. It's as simple as that. We need to get going. Like I said, the rebuild was going to be big enough if Jackson was still here. The fact that he's now gone as well there is an even bigger job at hand. You know, the club, but it, it's going to be a full reset. It is literally going to be a full reset. And dare I say, very similar to the 2011-12 reset that we had when we won the league. Obviously, the manager wasn't sacked. You know, Chris Powell was given the summer to prove what he can do. Unlike this time, Jackson was given the chop. So, yeah. That's it. That That is, uh, yeah, that's the end of this video. Johnny Jackson... Has been sacked as Charlton manager. Very mixed feelings about it. I think ultimately it depends on who we bring in to replace him. And like I said on Twitter, I think he did prove himself to be tactically, tactically inept. While I would have liked him to be given the summer and build his own team, I wasn't inspired by what I was seeing. So I guess in that sense, the right decision has been made. And you could really class it as a statement of intent. If the next appointment that we make, whoever it is, is the right call. Like I said, top of my list of candidates, I'd probably throw Warburton and Mowbray. They're probably the top of my list. But I really don't have a clue who we're going to bring in. But to Thomas Sangard, you really do need to get this right. Because if you don't, the finger will be pointed at you. It's as simple as that. All I can really say for Jackson is I wish him all the best for the future. It's as simple as that. All I can do is wish him the best. You know, he dedicated 12 years of his life for this club, as I say. Absolutely outstanding as a player. A shame it didn't really work out as a manager. Could say that he was let down by Sangard by the contract he was given. And he inherited a very dire squad that Sangard played a massive part of building. But ultimately, I just wasn't inspired by what I saw from him. So I think in that regard, it was the right decision. But... With this next managerial appointment, man, we seriously need to get it right. There is a massive rebuild at hand. Give this manager the tools, you know, invest in him. Let him get the players that he wants. Sangard, I don't want him anywhere near having the final say when it comes to transfers. He cannot make the same mistake as he did last year. Give the manager what he wants. Let him sign the players he wants. Simple as that, really. But right now, from the outside looking in, this club does look like a circus. You know, the soap proper of Charlton Athletic continues, but... Let's just hope and pray that this works out, man. Because if this doesn't, then this could backfire absolutely horrendously. But we'll wait and see, eh? We'll wait and see. So thank you all very much for watching this video. Get your thoughts in the comments below. Johnny Jackson sacked. Was it the right call? Who would you get in? Who is your replacement for Jackson? I'm sure we're going to find out very soon. Well, we've got to find out very soon because we're all in limbo right now. We don't know what the fuck is going on. We've got 17 out of contract players, you know, a transfer window fast approaching. The season starts at the end of July. We need to sort this out very fucking quickly. I am stunned. I'm still very shocked. I did not expect it whatsoever. I think ultimately the right decision was made, but still shocked. Still shocked. So, yeah. Thank you all very much for watching this video. I'll see you all in the next one, whenever that will be. This has been Tyler Rowlinson. Have a nice day. See you all soon. Take it easy. Stay safe. See you all later. Thanks for all the memories, Johnny. Thank you for dedicating a lot of your life to this football club. And I wish you all the best in the future. A true Charlton hero. See you later.